<laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Tuesday Facebook Live. I'm Betsy. Erin's going to sneak out from behind the phone in just one second. Um, we have a uh, special guest filled Facebook Live for you today. Um, so we're super excited. We've got Alex, who's going to join us from Cleveland. And we've got Linda and Samantha, who are going to join us live from their workshop in France. So it's going to be a big day. Um, and what's it all about is Erin and her hello, beautiful hello. Vintage shirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's actually Alex's vintage yes. shirt. But I don't think she'd appreciate me no. stealing it. <laughs> <laughs> but you get to wear it for today. Yes. So that's exciting. Yes, exactly. It's mm -hmm. cheerful and bright, which is really nice because it's extremely rainy and dark and dreary today. It is, but <laughs> honestly, I love it. I've been waiting for the rain, so we're, we're happy about that. But yeah, so Alex transformed a Venice shirt into a pullover top. Yes. So it looks fantastic. It's got the same great back detail mm -hmm. as the Venice shirt, um, but it's, it's been simplified. The sleeves have been shortened. The, you know, the collar has been taken off and the um, button front detail has been simplified and taken off as well. So yeah. That's my kind of shirt. Yes. <laughs> Make it easy. Uh, yes. So yes. here's the original Venice from the pattern. You got your button front, long sleeves, and this is great for fall, mm -hmm. but easy, end of summer, that's the way to go, I think. So should we talk about another easy blouse yes. first before yes. we jump before in? before we jump in. So the Willow blouse debuted, and um, this month we are doing a beautiful array of Liberty print kits. Um, Betsy put together a wonderful presentation for our August workshop for So Confident this year. And to accompany that, we did some kits from Liberty, kits. Liberty of London. So each week this month, we've been debuting a limited edition kit. Um, this week we had three. These are the two that's left. This is a beautiful one called Burgundy Floral Ballet. I hope you can see that. And then this little guy is fruit. It's like a little collage of fruit. And I think he's really cute. Mm -hmm. So. We wanted to share those with you. And the Liberty fabric is perfect for the Willow blouse. It's soft, it's smooth, um, it has that still a little bit of that crisp cotton texture, so it's a really great pairing. I know, it's beautiful and it's easy to sew, um, so it feels like silk, yes. but the ease of cotton. Yes. So. Again, sold. <laughs> sold. <laughs> so yeah. Should we see if someone's I think trying so. to come on? Do you want me to check it out? Yeah. Okay, well, let's check out and see if Linda is okay. ready to be online with us. So we're, we are testing our technology today by having Linda and Samantha join us from France. Um, so we're gonna have to go back and forth a little bit to see when they're ready to come on. So you'll have to bear with us just a bit. Well. It Looks like we don't have any requests right now, okay. but Samantha, Linda, if you're watching. We're ready when you're ready. We would love to hear from you. And I'm looking forward to, hopefully we'll get a little bit of a tour of the chateau because I've not been there and I'd like to see it. <laughs> so we'll wait and see when they are ready to come on and join us. Well, I don't see them. I. I actually see Samantha's son on here, but not <laughs> Samantha. Um, so I think we'll just have to um, we'll just move on and, yeah. and check back. Yeah, I think that works. Okay, let's do that. All right. Alex is on, so oh. if we, I mean, if we, you know, when we get to that point, then yeah, we're set we'll to get go. Alex on. Yeah, mm -hmm. good. Well, should okay. we talk a little bit about the Venice itself? We should. Let's um, bring out, we brought out the original. We have another original that I wanted to show because I just love it. I think it's beautiful. Um, this beautiful print, watercolor print, you know, so you can really make it in something that's drapey, something that has a little bit more body, like the cotton one that we showed. Um, this cotton, I think, has a little bit more structure mm -hmm. um, than the softer fabrics. So you can really do a lot with the Venice in terms of fabric choices, mm -hmm. like the one that we have over here. Yeah, let's see that one. So a wonderful customer, Rhonda Gaddy. Hi, Rhonda. She made this Venice variation, and this is a, a beautiful cotton. 
And it's a heavier weight cotton. I'd say it's a mid-weight cotton. It's, like it's kind of like a quilting cotton mm -hmm. weight, whereas this one is more of a lawn weight. Mm -hmm. um, not as thin as a Liberty fabric, but Some definitely texture. thinner than that. Mm -hmm. so. And what I love, I think certain fabrics, you're like, wow, I love that print, but I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. <laughs> because of the maybe the weight, you think it might be a little heavier for garments. But I think that the Venice is a great example of what you can do with a mid-weight printed cotton. And the nice thing with the slightly heavier fabric is that you get the body of the ruffle and you get the body of the shirt, whereas with the drapier rayon, it's going to fall and it's going to flow and be beautiful. But if you mm -hmm. want a little bit more of the structure to actually see the design details, um, a fabric with more body gives that to you. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I want to get a little closer and so you can see the details on the back here. Not sure how much of this you can see, but the, it has a three button placket at the back and then it has the ruffle that comes into that placket, which I think is a really fun, fun detail that we kept from the original. So I noticed we've got um, some interesting darts here, which is kind of nice. I like mm -hmm. that shaping mm -hmm. in the shoulder, I think is important. Right, yeah. I think so, and it, it fits really well at the shoulders. I know we had um, a customer at So Kansas recently, and mm -hmm. she just really loved to have a fitted sleeve, make sure it was right on her shoulder line, which I think is nice. I think it gives you a nice slim look when you have um, mm -hmm. a fitted sleeve like that. So I think that having all those details here at the top is really flattering. Yeah, that's great. And so what would you wear with this with? Well, I have on the Hudson's oh. with it. And that is a cotton candy pink Hudson. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> Definitely sporting Alex's look here today. Uh, but this is a linen viscose and in a candy pink. <laughs> so, and so, yeah, the Hudson, I think, is a good option to mm -hmm. wear with the Venice. Um, the Helix, I think, would be nice. The pencil pant. Yeah, I think you want a slimmer pant if you're using something with a little more body. So you've got, like, a good proportion with the the structure up there mm -hmm. and then a slimmer leg. Mm -hmm. um, the helix, or I was thinking actually the pencil would be great. You just pop them on and, and mm -hmm. go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. that'd probably be where I would go with it. <laughs> All right, so should we see if anyone else yeah, is ready to see, join? I think see. we're just gonna be going back and forth today just yeah. to see <laughs> what we can, if we can have some guests here. Still no guests. Still no guests. <laughs> Well, how about we have um, Alex, if you want to join us now, yeah. that would be a good starting point, I think, and you can talk about the garment that you made. Yeah, so Alex is coming from Cleveland, and she is going to give you tips for making this garment, because she's the one who uh, came up with it, so. <laughs> she's still coming. <laughs> we tested, I don't know if you guys saw, we tested... Um, the technology yesterday on Facebook Live, and everybody was very nice and patient with us while we were back and forth trying to get everyone on. But when you're bringing people from around the globe together, it is sometimes more difficult. And we could, if we wanted to take a few questions, we could take a few questions yeah. while, while we're waiting. Yeah, we could do some questions. What have we got? Um, does the linen viscose wrinkle as much as plain linen? Does the linen viscose, oh, I guess you have a microphone. Um, does it wrinkle, just used to having to repeat it. Uh, I don't think it wrinkles quite as much as plain linen, but it will wrinkle. Um, I have a skirt made out of the linen viscose, and what it does is it, it's more like it gets like this rumpled look, um, so you don't get the sharp lines of a wrinkle. It's more kind of an all over rumple, and actually I really like it, um, and I think it works and doesn't come off as like super wrinkly. How would it be, and I assume this is the, the Venice top, how would it be in a linen, a Japanese linen cotton? Oh, I think a Japanese linen cotton would be perfect for the Venice top. Um, or we've got some double gauze, that would be gorgeous. But that structure of fabric would work really well with it, I think. Oh, we might be getting somebody. Maybe not. <laughs> Um, 
And so the Venice, like I said, we've made it in the cotton and then we made it in that drapier fabric. You could also do like a rayon and go like full drape. Um, I think I think you could lengthen it into a dress as well, which would be really nice in a drapey fabric. Um, and I also wonder if, though we haven't tried it, if the pullover top particularly would be nice in a knit. Erin, do you think you could do it in a knit? Oh, definitely. Wouldn't I that think be that nice? would be fantastic. Yeah. And then you wouldn't have to do the... Yeah, there's with the, the, with the switch of the way of... Um, the shirt is made, you do like a yoke and you do a um, button in the back. But if you did a knit, you wouldn't have to deal with that. You could just pop it on over your head. So that's something to think about. And with that, you know, you could do tunic length, you could do dress length. You got some <laughs> options. <laughs> well, Alex is trying to request, but I'm not seeing it there. So I'm going to answer a few more questions. Okay, <laughs> let's do some questions. I'll go switch. How about that? Um, so there was a question about um, the opening in the back. Um, and so the, I'll just go over a few more details of this Venice here. So we talked about um, it has these beautiful darts here in the front. Um, the changes on the front of the garment, so it, uh, it did have a button front um, all the way down the front, and so instead we made it a pullover. And so eliminated that in the front, and in order to get it over your head, we created a back yoke here, and then left an opening to the neckline, that way, and then have a hook and eye, if I can get that open, and that way you can get it over your head. And then back to the front, another detail on the, I'm going to get the original here, another detail of the front is that the ruffles on the original go all the way to the center front. Can you see that? Yes. But then on our new version, we left the front simple, but then added the ruffle here at the side. So there's this wonderful, like, I love this angular piece here where the ruffle starts and then it extends to the back and then meets this button placket, just like the original. The original does that as well. I'm going to pull this back just a bit because you can't quite see the ruffle. Okay. So, and you might push it back a little bit. So the ruffle detail in the back is the same as the okay. original. Same three button placket here, same way the ruffle meets that placket here. And it is a functional button placket, so you can, if you're coordinated enough, um, open up this placket here. So these are functional buttons. And then again, it comes around to the right side and finishes off there. So, and then the sleeve. The sleeve has been simplified, so the sleeve of the original is very detailed, a very traditional sleeve, a traditional sleeve um, detail here with the placket and the button on the back. So instead, we just kept it simple for summer, made it a short sleeve, you know, hits just above the elbow, didn't have to deal with all those details, so it's just a simple hem. So that's what we did. And one of the great things is we do have a tutorial that you can get for just $5 that talks about all the details and that we did to make this simplified blouse. But I think it's really cute. I love that it keeps the same details in the back with the ruffles, because I think that's the strong part about this pattern is this ruffle detail, but then it simplifies the top and makes it a short sleeve for this time of year and into fall. So I love that. Mm -hmm. Another version that we have, um, this is one that actually Kathy made quite a few years ago. I can't remember exactly when she made this, but this is where we started. So we had um, some inspiration from a sleeveless garment, and so she decided to use the Venice for that detail. And so this is where this thought process started, was in a sleeveless version, which is basically all the same details except for where we left the sleeve off and you could do a simple bias binding to finish off the armhole. But I think that's really cute. This is out of a cotton sateen. All right. Should we go over the, 
the details? Or yeah. is Alex on? Well, I, her request hasn't come through yet, although maybe you can see it. She said she sent a million of them, oh. but I don't see it coming through. <laughs> I didn't see it pop up either. No. Um, uh. So I don't know if you want to check again. I don't want to hit anything incorrect because I have not done that side before. But her name How about I, come up. I'll go over the details, Alex, and then we can um, try again. Try it again. Okay. All right. So I have a few details here on how you can create your gathers. So um, one of the techniques um, that Linda um, always shows about gathers, because gathering I think can be a little tricky. Um, sometimes your basting isn't strong enough. So I think that this technique is a really great secure way to create even ruffles. So what you do is you um, have a zigzag stitch along the raw edge of your ruffle. And it's about 3.5 millimeters wide by three millimeters long. And you do this zigzag over a heavy weight thread. And once you've done that, and you're doing this zigzag about half an inch away from the raw edge. And once you do that, you want to secure it at one end. And then that gives it the structure and um, the ability to not break. And so then you can pull the opposite end to create your ruffles. And one of the things that we tend to use to create even ruffles is a stiletto. So you can use this as you're creating and as you're pulling to create the ruffles, but you can also do it as you're stitching. So you can, um, once you've created your ruffle, the actual stitching of the ruffle to your garment is going to be at your traditional 5 8 inch seam allowance, which is going to be very close to that zigzag. So you're really gonna possibly catch part of that zigzag in your stitching. And then as you sew, you again use your stiletto to keep those ruffles in place and to kind of even them out as you're stitching. So I think this is great because I know I've struggled making ruffles with just your simple basic basting stitch and they always end up breaking halfway through the stitching process and then I have a strange portion um, that's flat. So this is a really um, good, strong way to create ruffles. And you'll definitely need that for the Venice. You get a good shot of that? So yeah. I'm going to need a close-up. Let me get a little bit closer. All right. Hopefully people can see that. Now, um, we have a Venice tutorial just on making the classic one, right? And we've got information like that in that one. Right. So in So Confident... Series eight. Um, series eight. Um, so many. Um, <laughs> so we did, um, that was when we introduced the Venice pattern. And so we did a tutorial at the end of that series about the Venice. And so that's everything you need to know about creating the ruffle, um, creating the placket, um, and all the other design details of the Venice. So we do have that on special this week. So check that out if you're interested in the Venice. Um, why don't you take a look at this? And okay. I was going to answer a question that someone had sure. about what I'm wearing, which is a version of the Florence shirt made into a dress. Um, I should have brought one so you could see it. So basically the Florence shirt has like long sleeves and a cuff detail and fun tucks in the front. Um, and I kind of like this project, super simplified it, lengthened it, and then I put a little gather and a kind of faux belt in the back. And I wear it all the time. It is kind of a perfect summer look. And then um, instead of doing a cuff, I just rolled up the sleeves and I did a actual permanent little um, flap. I can't think of what that's called right now. And then put a button there because I like a three quarter sleeve. And if you have it permanently there, it's always the right length. So that is what this is and I was thinking about doing a tutorial for it so if you would be interested in that let me know and I'll put it together because you can always use a good dress variation so let's see Aaron's checking to see where Alex and Linda are I know they both sent requests but Facebook is being tricky for us <laughs> today so we'll see are we might you have to them? do a separate <laughs> guest appearance oh, Facebook live we could do that. Because um, it's not giving me the option to invite either. Well, Facebook, come on. <laughs> Work yesterday. 
Yeah, it did work yesterday. Although it did take a little bit <laughs> to get to it. Um, I also saw a, com saw a comment that someone liked the Liberty of London presentation that was this month so confident. And um, thank you very much. I loved putting it together. I worked there for some time when I was in college and became a Liberty aholic. Um, I have a big bin of Liberty fabrics, perhaps too big but I am trying to work through them and actually sew with them and not just keep them and pet them and love them, which I think we all do with some of our fabrics. So, whenever we get Liberty in, I'm always the first one at the uh, cutting <laughs> table for it. Well, all right, should we show off fabrics? Let's show off some fabrics. Let's do it, let's do it. All right, and I can get closer if you like. That way yeah. you can you guys can really see them. Come close. So we've got some great prints, mostly cottons, but a couple other um, options as well. So these guys are all the same weight as what is on the mannequin. So it's that kind of mid-weight cotton. In fact, that is what is on the mannequin. Um, and we've got some really fun kind of end of summer prints. These are both cactus prints, actually all three. And depending on what colors you like to wear, we've got a beautiful black and kind of a coral and red. And then this has the nice cream background. And it's got cactus and flowers and butterflies and birds. So it's a, you know, it's a pretty um, intricate print. It's got a lot going on. That one's got a little hummingbird, which is really cute. But it's the same print, all three. And it's interesting to see how with just different colorways, how different the fabric looks. You know, the color compared to the cream and black is really interesting. We have another fun one. Hopefully you can see this. If not, I can bring it closer. It's a cowboy print. So you've got um, some portraits of cowboys and some ladies and some cactus and Tito the mule, which is pretty hilarious. <laughs> And I love like the light pink background. And, you know, it's just fun to use like a whimsical print sometimes, especially in just a top that you can pair with a simple pant. Uh, this is a tropical print on black with some really bright colors. And again, it's the other colorway of the mannequin shirt. But we also have it on the cream background as well. Um, and then the cream background, we actually have two end cuts in, and I think that they are two and three quarter yards, but you'll have to confirm that. And if I'm not mistaken, and we'll confirm with Erin, um, you can get a medium, up to a medium out of it. So we'll see. Erin, uh, is that right? Up to a medium out of the end cuts? Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm gonna get it back here a little bit. So you can uh, see better? Yes, okay. yes. But yes, you can get, um, we have two cuts of it. You yes. probably said that, two yep. and three quarter yards. Two and three quarter yards. Yes. So this lovely lady, I'm gonna take it out just because it deserves to be seen up close and personal. This is what Erin's shirt is made of, or Alex's shirt, I guess I should say. It is a panel print. It is the Sunrise Island, so even if you cannot be on an island to enjoy a sunrise, you can wear it on your shirt. I did notice a question earlier that was how many panels to make the shirt. Erin, do you know that? I mean, I guess I could count on your shirt. Um, I know that the yardage two. in general, um, it's uh, three yards to so make three yards. all sizes okay. for the 45 wide. The panels are, I think, 26 inches wide so i guess four panels i would think four panels i think four panels yes and depending on how you want to lay out the pattern mm -hmm. i think that would be important um, so we have sunrise which you've seen but there's also sunset because you can't have one without the other and this is a whoa hey there <laughs> this is a darker version and instead of the pink and teal you've got kind of almost a um very light cream sickle and then like a royal blue and just a little bit stronger, punchier colors. So if your color tones aren't for pink, you might try this one. Let's see. So let's move this lady and look over here. This is also a cotton, a very light, long cotton with a giant 
um, pink and red flowers. I love the pop of teal. And I think the background, which is almost like an eggplant, really almost makes it multi-seasonal. Whereas maybe the pink and teal shirt, you'd want to just stick with warmer weather. This can go into fall, it can go into winter, because it's just a little bit darker and kind of goes across the seasons. This is another panel print. And so what you have, and I wonder if I should take this down, but I think so. You think that'd, be, so? that'd be nice. Yeah. Um, basically two windows in a way across. So with this, you can play with placement. Um, you could do some interesting geometric designs with it. You know, you could do centered, you could do off center. There are some options for it. And it's got just a beautiful frame of tropical flowers. And this is not cotton, this is um, rayon, viscose crepe. And it's very soft and it feels like a dream. So I think that would be really fun to break it up and actually use that stripe mm -hmm. in interesting places um, and maybe not even worry about the panel. Oh, that's true. Just kind of play into the stripe, because I'll always play into a stripe. <laughs> So then we've got, get this out of the way here, another beautiful rayon. And this is fun. It's more of a stylized tropical print. Uh, you've got a rust background, and then it's got some like, kind of light pink, sky blue, eggplant, and cream. Now, I love a huge print because I think it really makes it more interesting. For me, like a bigger print is really the fashion fabric. Um, as opposed to, I don't know, small prints, I do like them, but I do think like a bigger print just has more of an impact. And this is a beautiful light rayon. This guy, this is one of Linda's absolute favorites. It is a light cotton, and I don't know if you can see it, hopefully, if not, I can bring it closer. It's got a fun print of cactuses again. We have, a, I guess, a cactus theme today. Um, and little monkeys and fruit and palm trees. So I don't know where they are, but there are cactus and monkeys and palm trees. But they're all on this sweet little fabric. And it's got like a sky blue background. And then finally, well, I guess not finally, we've got two back there. We've got another very light cotton lawn. And it's just got a fun, large, again, print. You've got your kind of sunny yellow background, purples and oranges and navy blues. And that's a really nice print. And it's super light. This is probably the lightest of all the cottons. Um, so, Can you bring um, the monkey cactus bring the and monkey up? the okay. bottom one? That would be great. Monkey is just a little bit small to see from far away. That's not graceful. Oh, how fun. <laughs> it is really cute. I'm just going to pop them up like that. And what about the lower one, actually? This one? Yeah. I didn't of quite get the camera adjusted for that one. Oh, those colors are fantastic. Mm -hmm. I love how like the wall somehow is very random yet also very succinct like it's all comes together with yeah. the pinks and the mauve and the cactus and yeah you know I feel like you can see like the the colors of the season and it keep popping out like the rusty kind of oranges and the dark pinks like as you go around you see that a lot of them have that in them we also have two other fabrics hiding over here. This is the cowboy print that we have in pink on the wall. And actually this is perfect because I can show you up close. This is the cream version. And you can see Tito the mule. <laughs> and then another kind of stylized tropical cotton. We've got that guy. Another great color combination. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. So, a little bit of everything for everybody. Do you want to go large print, small print? 
super bright or a little bit calmer, we've got, we've got it here for you. Um, and you know, everything's good for the Venice shirt. I think it'll all work out well for that. Have we had any requests? I'm still, I apologize, I'm still not seeing any requests actually. Okay. I've, um, there's customers on here that have the ability to come on live. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't see that notification um, by Alex's name. Mm. So, and I don't see Linda or Samantha on at all. I mean, oh, interesting. Um, so I'm not sure. So Facebook. Come on, Facebook. Um, a little frustrated with you, yeah. but. <laughs> <laughs> well, do we have any questions that we want to answer? Yeah, let's just roll with it. So thank you guys for being patient. Yeah, so sorry about that. You know, you never know with technology what it will give you. One day you can make it work, the next day not so much. We did have um, Barbara Hartzell a comment. She wants to know when the special live will be. So I think it would be fun to, we'll figure out something where Linda and Samantha um, and the whole crew at the Chateau can yeah. can come on live and, and share the projects and everything that they're working on because it's a really spectacular event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she's there all week, so we'll figure that out. Okay. Um, do you want to talk a little bit more about your Liberty presentation and because um, that's in So Confident and... Yeah, yeah. So the Liberty presentation that we did for So Confident members this month, it was a PDF kind of digital magazine. Um, and in it, I wrote an article about the history of Liberty because for those of you who don't know, um, Liberty is actually a store, and it started as a store in London in the late 1800s. And even though we know them for their fabric, um, it is actually the most beautiful department store I've ever been to. It's amazing. It is huge, and it's made out of, um, <laughs> it, it's in the Tudor style, the English Tudor style. And the inside of the store was built out of wooden chips. So it's got all of this woodwork, and it's, it's really interesting. It's a real experience to go in. Um, when I was in college, I worked there for three months and got to explore all the departments. They've got everything from like the best high-end fashion. I mean, the, the stuff that you look, you just can't find anywhere else. They've got it. Um, they've got an antique section. There's oriental rugs. They really started when um, the craze for Oriental textiles, Japanese specifically textiles and um, decoration kind of blew up in England. And at that time, Arthur Liberty opened the store and because the textiles were hard to get a hold of, he started milling his own. And so he started milling silk and then expanded and expanded and expanded throughout the years, and then I think it was the 1930s-ish, I'd, I'd have to check my research, but in the 1930s, they started making the Tonalon cotton fabric, which is what we know and love today. And it's really interesting because they have what is known as the Liberty Archives. And in the Liberty Archives, so I've heard, are like 50,000 swatches of the different prints and colorways and different fabrications that they've, you know, manufactured through the years. And to me, that is such a historical record of what design has been since the late 1800s. It's a really amazing, I think, invaluable um, resource for fashion designers use it, the Liberty designers use it. Um, I'd give my right arm to get in there and look around, but I don't think that's going to happen anymore. So anyway, the um, presentation was the history of the store. We also talked about the fabric itself, and we kind of went with the history of the prints. These prints that we're showing with the willow are part of their, um, they do two current collections every year, and then there's also a classic collection, which has prints that have been designed in the 30s, the 60s, and they keep reusing those. So um, we talked about some of the prints that were designed way back when and that have been reused and how they've modernized them and changed them with color and scale, and that was, I thought, really interesting. 
Um, I also had a section on the ready to wear that you can find with Liberty. A lot of designers, Gucci, Puma, Adidas, work with Liberty and um, you can see their fabric on runway and, and you have, they always have. Yves Saint Laurent worked with them quite a bit in the 70s. So we touched upon that. And then of course we touched upon what we like to sew with Liberty and we had a little section um, with samples of sewing workshop garments. And a lot of them were mine because I sew with it a lot. So <laughs> you, could, uh, you could definitely tell who was the Liberty Holic in that section. So it was really fun to put together. So if they are a member this year, um, where do they find this? If you're a member, it is in um, your member page. So the same way you would go to July to watch the class, um, it is August. You're going to go to August, and there is the download for that in your monthly thing. So it's there. If you can't find it, email me, and I will send it to you if you have any issues. All right, I'm going to try and get your um, your dress. Oh, my dress. Full length okay. here. So I was thinking about making the dress. Um, I'm actually going to England in a couple weeks, and I was thinking this dress and knit would be, she's going real far back, <laughs> <laughs> would be a really nice travel dress because it's very comfortable. I would put pockets in it. This one didn't get pockets, but I would put pockets in and it's a Florence, you said? It's a Florence. OK. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn around. I love the belt. Yeah. Just the back. Just love how that cinches in the waist. Mm -hmm. And I like the Florence because, as we talked about earlier, it really fits me well in the shoulders. So even though you've got like a billowing body, um, I think having the fit in the shoulders for, for my frame works really well. It makes it feel slimmer where it's needed to be slimmer and then you can be blousey in the areas that need a little extra blouse. <laughs> um, would you wash linen viscose? Yeah, I would wash linen viscose. Um, I would probably pre-wash it. Um, I normally do everything on cold delicate and then a light dry, but we do recommend you pre-washing anything using a four inch square of fabric on the settings that you prefer. So you can see how that fabric turns out and see if you like the way it washes. Okay, I don't see any other questions. Um, you guys are being amazing. I can jump back in here and join <laughs> yeah, Betsy. Come back. Um, so thank you guys for Yeah, so sorry about being that. Patient. We teased you with our special guests. <laughs> so we'll figure out something. Um, we were really looking forward to trying to um, you know, show Linda, Samantha, the group at the Chateau. Alex was going to give a little talk about what she made here because she's the one who made this outfit. Yeah. So sorry, guys. <laughs> sorry. And thank you, Alex, for letting us steal your outfit. Okay. <laughs> we'll yes. send it back pretty soon. Yes. Maybe. <laughs> so what do we have on sale this week? So our beautiful wall of fabric mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is on sale. We've got the Venice pattern is on sale. And the Venice is digital and print. Mm -hmm. So that's great. Yep. We've got the series eight Venice tutorial that's on sale. Mm -hmm. We have the yeah. bias binding. One bias strips for stylish ways, I think mm -hmm. is what it's called. That's on sale this week. Mm -hmm. um, and stiletto. then stiletto. Yes, the stiletto to make the perfect ruffles. And then the tutorial that has the step by step on how to make this is only five dollars. So, so that's a pretty good deal. Exactly. And that will show you how to do all the pattern work to make the initial Venice into this Venice, um, plus some tips. So. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> we will let you know um, if we can get together with Linda to do another live this week. And uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. All right. Thanks, guys.